Hello world, this is the Yacht Report and I'm your host Akish Aklod Mullins and today I want to talk to you about a comment that our good old president made uh, yesterday during the one year anniversary of the um, riot at the Capitol. I mean, I'm sorry, it wasn't a riot. Uh, they're, they're calling it an in, a insurrection or or something like that. I don't know if it was that, but okay. Anywho. The point is, even after a year of uh, our good old president, Mr. Biden, you know, when he went on, you know, Charlemagne, well, spoke to Charlemagne on the Breakfast Club and said, if you, you're not black and you don't vote for me. Yeah, I remember that. I also remember different people talking about, you know, they're not this kind of president, that kind of president, or they're just not the president of black people. But Joe's been president for a year, and yet he can't let Trump go. And every time he does something wrong, he makes an excuse and wants to blame someone else, something else, mainly Trump. How about we all get together, sit and listen, and see what Mr. President Biden had to say. Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris started the day at Statuary Hall with speeches marking the January 6th attacks on the U.S. Capitol. First time in our history, a president had not just lost an election, he tried to prevent the peaceful transfer of power as a violent mob breached the Capitol. A former okay, I, I, not, not to cut off Mr. Mr. President. But I, I just have a question that I have to pose to you. Is it me, or do everyone remember what happened during the year that we wish to not remember? I recall that there was a group called the BLM who showed up at the White House. And when Trump was inside, the White House and BLM showed up to the White House. They said Trump was racist. Why? Because Trump put a gate around the White House and nobody got in that White House. No one got to that front door. So I'm confused as to how people were able to make it to the front door of the White House when it was time for Trump to leave office and you to come into office. I don't know. Like I said, I was just asking the question. I didn't mean to cut him off. Like, uh, you know, he can, he, he can finish. He can finish. The president who lies about this election. He can finish. And the mob that attacked this Capitol could not be further away from the core American values. I and those like me in the African-American community would like to know what these core American values is because if people had a problem with Trump saying make America great again and everybody and I hear those in my community saying I don't know what you mean by making America great again because I mean America was great back when y'all had us as slaves I don't know I wasn't there this is what people are saying you're now saying getting back to America's core values hmm we know what your core values have done to my community with your crime bill. You know, but that's that's something you don't want to talk about. You know, that 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 didn't happen now that you're president. You don't want to talk about that. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, I'm just asking questions. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm confused. After he spoke, the president took questions from the press where he was asked about the divisive tone of his speech. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Please pay attention to this next bit of information that uh, our dear little president want to give up. Does calling him out divide more than it heals? Look, the way you have to heal, you have to recognize the extent of the wound. You can't pretend. You got to face it. That's what great nations do. They face the truth, deal with it, and move on. See? See? Even our president, finally, finally, for the first time, vice president running for president and being actual president, he actually said something that was actually true. 
And if you didn't hear it, I'm going to play it back for you again. Questions from the press where he was asked about the divisive tone of his speech. Does calling him out divide more than it heals? Look, the way you have to heal, you have to recognize the extent of the wound. Okay. The man he was talking about was former president of Donald Trump. And our president, before he became president, was saying how Trump was dividing the country with his words and his actions. And everyone is calling Trump a racist and bigot and all the other, you know, standard part of the course script they tell, you know, that, that when they they want to get the white man out. You know, these are good tools to use. Race is is as imaginary as it is. They got us all fooled into believing that it's real because it's not. Because if you really think about it, you know what? We're, we're going to get into it. If you really think about it, what is race? What is it? When you say black, yeah, everybody says, you know, people that's from Africa. But they want to try to say, you know, from Africa or you were a slave. Well, us in America, you know, we're, you know, black comes from nigger. Because, you know, they use nigger first. And then it became Negro. And then Negro is black and Spanish. So then it became black. And then black somewhere became African American, which that is the only one that I, I'm going to agree with. There was a time where I didn't, but I guess time, age, wisdom, I don't know, it, it, things teaches you, but now this is how I see it. Race is imaginary, and I'm going to, we can't use us to show why it's imaginary. I'm going to use you to show why it's imaginary. Because when you call a white person a white person, most of them will look at you and say, I'm not white. And then we'll look at them and say, yes, you are. And then they'll say, I'm not white. They'll say that they're European, or they'll say that they're from they're Irish, or Australian, or some geographic location, country, or nation that they're from, but not white. So I would like to know who are the white people, because I think us African Americans are being played for a fool. While we're accepting a word that is imaginary, and oh, for the people out there who says that, uh, who love Barack Obama and says, you know, that, that that is our first black president, why didn't you listen to your president when he told you himself, out of his mouth, when even I have to say, I, I don't care how small something is, when someone does something for you, they did something for you. In my mind, thinking about it, looking back at it now, yes, he may have given a certain group of people a lot of rights and things that they didn't have, but he gave us information, something that we choose not to use properly. That information he gave us was, black has no standing under the color of law, meaning black does not exist, meaning black has no rights, meaning black is imaginary. But we can't let it go. African American, well, it works because, well, we, our ancestors were, I don't know, the story, even that story is becoming convoluted nowadays because originally we were told we were uh, kidnapped and beaten and sold into slavery. And now we're being told that. It was a choice, and it was indentured servitude. You had to work it off, and but the point is, no matter if you if it was, no matter how it went down, when it happened, it was bad, and that needs to be addressed. That needs to be fixed. That is a wound that has not closed and will not close, and. For as crazy as it may be, I wasn't a slave. I didn't grow up on a plantation. But for me and those in my community like me, in the African-American community like me, who share the same story and background, understand that when certain things in America that happens to one of us, we all feel it.
whether we like it or not, whether we want to admit it or not. We feel it. When one of us is out in the streets acting a plum fool, we feel it. We also sit with you and say, look at this stupid motherfucker. Like, why? Why? We all do. But then, you know, we ask for we ask for rights. We fight. We march. We protest. And that's uh, back when there was someone called John F. Kennedy that was president. And then there was someone called someone people called Martin and Malcolm that was marching and fighting. One was talking peace. The other was, you know, talking uh, by any means necessary. Uh, and then there was a president who just wanted to do the right thing. What do all three of these gentlemen have in common? They all died for what they believed in. What do all these people who got us arguing and fighting over this, that, and the other got in common? They all cashing a check when the camera go off. It's time for us to stop following everybody else's agenda and start looking at ourselves and asking ourselves, what can I do to help myself? Because the last time I checked, the only thing God gave us and promised us was free will. But that free will is over ourselves, not over someone else, not over someone else's thoughts, not over someone else's feelings, not over someone else's moves, how they make their money, however they do what they do, how they live their life. He gave us the free will over ourselves. All of this can be over and ended if everyone do just one thing. Mind your own business. Focus on yourself. Change yourself first. Michael Jackson even told us how to fix this. He made a whole song about it. Yeah, we say we love Michael. We talk about Michael behind Michael back. We say a lot of things about Michael. But even Michael was saying a lot of things that we just didn't want to listen to. He said that in order to change or heal anything, you got to start with the man in the mirror. Then Michael also had a, his uh, his uh, wake up moment. That's when he had made his song about they don't really care about us. And in that song, I'm gonna tell you this, and I'm not gonna go no more into it. You got to look up, look into it yourself. What's crazy about the song? We were not the only people who were done wrong on this planet. But yet, African Americans are the only people who have yet to receive real justice. Because to be honest with you, me looking at everything that goes on now, we're given crumbs, we're pacified, but nobody cares about giving us the true justice and really correcting the wrong that was made. Why do I say this? Well, recently, Sidney Poitier died. And I'm asking myself, I'm, I said when I seen, seen it come up on my, you know, on my screen, I'm like, shit, man, Sidney died. I remember Cicely died last year, and then, you know, Sidney died this year. You know, our girl Betty died, but, you know, what they do to their people have nothing to do with it. I love Betty. But what they did to Betty, talking about Betty, how they was after she passed away, that was wrong. How they trying to do Sydney now, that's wrong. When someone dies, why not celebrate their life, celebrate their work, celebrate the positive things they've done? Why is it that when they die, you want to bring out all of the scandalous things you can to make that money. Y'all love to make money off of death. I mean, and it, it used to be a joke, a bad joke in the music industry and on the streets of those that know about the things in the music industry. 
that nobody cares about you until you pass away and that you're worth more when you die. Fast forward to 2020. I've seen more millionaires made off of the death of African American black men than I've seen in my damn life. I think more money has been made off of the death of African American men in this last year than has been made during these men being one man being sold in slavery. This I find a problem. Do I think it's wrong for families to be com compensated when something tragic happens? No, they should be compensated. Something tragic did happen. And for people who say, oh, money doesn't solve everything. Money doesn't solve anything at all. That's not the point of the money. I don't get mad at those people because I, I, can, I can understand and I can see it. And you will never understand it, the person that's complaining about it until you've experienced it or dealt with something in of that magnitude to happen in your life when somebody is tragically taken from you when someone is taken from you and you there is nothing you can do to comfort yourself again no money doesn't money is not they're not saying that money solves it money is helping because it doesn't. It is not going to bring that person back. What it does is help you to feel like something was done. Like something happened. Like someone had to feel what you feel. Most people, when tragedies happen and things like that, and there has to be a lawsuit, something has to, to, to come out. People have to are feeling how that family has to feel because, again, someone has to pay for it. So I don't, I don't fault the, the families. No, I fault the news media who were marching these people out there. We were look me looking at this now. And I don't know how the rest of you look at it, but we have to start looking at the symbolisms. We love to sit here and talk, 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 talk. talk. Talk about conspiracies and talk about this and talk about the Illuminati. Talk about them doing this. Talk about New World Order. Stop talking and start paying attention and using the knowledge that you've learned to see what is going on. Do I believe there is an Illuminati? No. Do I believe there is a New World Order? No, because we've always been living in a New World Order. The problem has been them trying to complete what they're trying to do. That's what the problem is. It's all about the majority. If they can get the majority to do what they want to do. They almost had the majority, but things just wasn't shaking out how they wanted it to because it ain't nobody beat for what you're talking about right now. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I don't know where you've been for the past two years. But it is what it is. Mr. President said that we need to talk about things in order to heal. And you know what? I don't want to misquote him. So I'm going to let Mr. President speak for himself. In the press where he was asked about. The I don't, I don't, I don't. Him out divide more than it heals. Look, the way you have to heal, you have to recognize the extent of the wound. We've been telling America the extent of our wounds with police brutality, our women dying in these hospitals giving birth, our women dying, going, being misdiagnosed mis in these doctor's offices from cancer. We are giving the wrong sentencing inside the courthouses because Another thing like race is imaginary, equality is imaginary because there's no such thing as equality. You can never, no one can be equal to no one. 
Everyone is different. Everyone's needs are different. But you can be fair. If you, if this is gentleman's first time, everyone makes a mistake. We all make mistakes. We all, you know, everyone makes mistakes and needs second chance. But if there's someone who is their first time, why do you want to throw that life away? Even our children. I've seen these past few years while I've been away, I've just been out, I've been watching. I don't, just sitting back watching everything. And just asking myself, why? Just why? You keep showing the ignorant. And then on the other hand, you want to say, oh, you want to fix it. But I would like to know, I go on social media. I see ignorance everywhere. But the news does not reflect. Why? I see there are drug dealers and kingpins and gang members and gang bangers in all communities here in these United States of America. Even within the communities of those persons of color. Where they do the most to these people. Why? Because, again, this is why I say those people do need protected, to be protected. But at the same time, all of those people are different from us African Americans. Why? Well, it was their choice to come here. They came of their own free will and came here because America told them this is the land of the free, the home of the brave. You know, get that American dream. The funny thing is, the ones y'all stole from Africa, the continent of Africa, because again, we are a people without a land. Africa is a continent, not a country. Africa has countries. We need to know the real country we came from. But at this point, we've been so mixed in breeding with other nationalities that at this point, who is really African American? Because a lot of us are biracial children. That is something else that does not want to be discussed. Because again, even with that, how far down the line does being biracial end? Which brings me back to my original thing, which what I said was, is black and white imaginary? Is black and white only about the color of your skin? Separating by the color of your skin. I don't know. But like our president said, it's an open wound. We need to talk about it. We need to talk about all the open wounds in the African American community. We need to fix them all. We need to, to fix the broken homes. We need to fix everything. We need, we need to reboot. There are a lot of us in the African American community that I see that has uh, went and decided to branch out on your own. And I commend you for that. I commend anyone who wants to go out here and make money on, on their own. Because another thing we have to stop doing, if we're going to keep saying that these white people are the enemy, the last time I checked, I don't know no one who does anything for their enemy. No one. This is the reason why you get scratched. It's like, if I don't like you, why would I want you sitting next to me? Why would I want you having the things that I have? Why would I want you enjoying the things that I enjoy? I don't like you. So we need to stop begging them for things 
that we can get and do ourselves. We have more than enough money flowing through the African-American community to start creating our own. We love to sit and talking about a fictional place called Wakanda when there are enough of us that can get together to actually build Wakanda. But guess what? Why? There ain't no money in a solution. The money's a problem. So no one wants to do that. So then I go with the next best thing. Like I said, since the since the you know what's been going on, there's been a lot of people that's been going out here and starting to do things on their own. And I just ask all of you people out here. I'm the type of person that everybody who knows me can tell you. You can sit and tell me something all night and all day, and I will listen to you. But I ain't going to believe not a damn word that came out of your mouth. Why? Actions speak louder than words. If you say you support black businesses, you care about black businesses, and we're going to stop calling them black businesses because we're not black. We're African American. Black and white is imaginary and it doesn't exist. As you can see from the screen, my skin is not black. It is damn brown and actually is, is being a little red right now as if the sun was out, but it's not. That's what it is. The thing is, there are a lot of African-American businesses out here. Like I said, it's a habit that I have to break. So no longer talk about supporting them. Support them. Support them. Encourage them. Work with them. This is their first time starting a business, running a business. They're learning as they're learning on the job. They're going to get some things wrong. They may be late. Some things may fall be between the cracks. But I just ask that you encourage them, support them, and work with them. Because you have no idea how stressed they are right now trying to get this off the ground with next to no money at all. And you are the only ones that can help them to get to that next step. But only if you really believe in helping African-American businesses. Because as I said, we have to help ourselves. We've seen, we've tried, we even slid. A half went up in there and it still didn't work. We have to help ourselves. The other thing I need, I want to say is I've, I'm still seeing this argument about that, oh, when it comes to, you know, African-Americans this and African-Americans that, and, oh, they don't care about us. They don't do this. They don't find our children. No Amber Alert. Yada, 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 yada. I will say this. I don't think some some people get it or understand. We now have social media. Everyone has access to social media. That's Twitter, that's Instagram, Facebook, whatever TikToks, whatever, 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 whatever. You have access to it. YouTube, you have access to it. If you say they're not reporting the news on us or keeping up the coverage on us, we need to start doing it. You get out, yo, when you see some injustice going on out there in the street, you get out your cell phone, you record it, also have context to what is going on, and get it to your favorite YouTuber. Get it to your favorite Instagrammer. Get it to your favorite uh, whoever's on Twitter. You have to do your part. And once we receive it, when we see it, when you see that so-and-so is mention, missing, I don't care if it was a male or female, boy or girl, man or woman, trans, gay or straight, doesn't matter. When it's ours, we share it. And we be on the lookout. 
But we can't sit and blame and continue to blame them for not putting out the Amber Alert or whatever it is when we got something that's even faster than that because everybody has social media. It will pop up on there quickly. And we'll be able to find ourselves quickly. It's time for us to start, like I said, help ourselves. If we want it, we can work for it. They don't have to, we don't have to wait for it to be given to us. Why? Because if they give it to us, we ain't going to care about it because we didn't work for it. Because all we're going to do is just sit and wait for the next one and wait for the next one and wait for the next one. And I don't have another 400 years to wait. I really don't. I mean, Martin and Malcolm already got it started. And you see what happened to them. They're not here no more. We keep seeing these stop gaps with these other ones that go out here, march, 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 protest, protest, protest. Cash a check. We don't hear from them no more. We got to start moving how they move. You see how we sit and talk and claim about a Illuminati and claim about a new world order and this and that and, you know, all is, you know, whoop de boo imaginary things we want to, you know, convince ourselves is going on in this world. We can actually take from their playbook. Because while we talking about it, they don't give a fuck. They're making moves. And we don't know what they're doing. But you know, they know what we're doing. Because we don't know how to shut the fuck up. We get on here and we will tell the whole fucking plan. And then be sitting there like, but how they find out? Because you fucking invited them. Like I said. Mr. President, as you said, there is an open wound. It needs to heal. We want to heal. I get tired of talking about this. I get tired of hearing about this. I get tired of thinking about this. I get tired of being made to feel a certain way just because of how light or dark the hue of my skin is, which is completely spooky to me, but this is what we continue to want to fight over with all the other things in this world that is more important. We choose to fight over the one that is imaginary, which is called race, which is called just what the color of your skin is. I think I'm with the rest of us African Americans. We know we're in America. We know how America works. Africa's a continent. We don't want to know what country in that continent are we from. Because when a Nigerian comes over here, they're not a Nigerian. They're not an African American. They're a Nigerian American. And when an Ethiopian comes over here, they're not an African American. They're an Ethiopian American. Do my people start to see where I'm going with this now? Black and white is imaginary. I don't want to hear it no more. We shouldn't talk about it no more. It's time for us to really find out the actual country we come from. Because that's the only way we're going to start uh, getting respect around here. Because I feel as though that those are the only ones who get respect. We were wondering how was it that um, how the Asians were able to get them a law passed here in America, a discrimination law passed here in America so quickly. You want to know how? They have a country behind them. We have no country. What makes it even worse about Africa? Africa still has kings. Africa still has queens. Hmm. But Africa is still divided. Africa, like I said, is countries. Even in those countries, is divided by tribes. There is no unity. So we will never get what it is that we're asking for unless we get it ourselves. Yeah, we know they fucked up the last Black Wall Street. 
But we're here now. We know what to look for now. We can protect ourselves now. It's time to stop begging and start doing for yourself. Because here's the funny thing. (laughs) When I was younger, oh, we was called the Generation X. Gen X talked real bad about us, down to us. And I went almost my whole life believing that I was a Gen Xer. Just to find out that I'm a millennial. And now that I think about it, it makes sense. Because millennials want, well, not all of us. There are those of us who are tired of asking and tired of begging, are ready to just do it ourselves. Because I see this, if we can put our egos aside and realize that what's for us is for us and no one can take that from us. But if we truly work together like everyone else does, truly look out for each other like everyone else does, and stop being angry and hating each other for what we have or don't have, and start working with each other to figure out how we can get it together, we can solve this problem quickly. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what it is I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just talking. I don't know. But what say you? You can let me know in the comments uh, what you think and how you feel about all of this. And I'll I'll get back to you promptly. I I, I answer I answer everyone because I I like to hear everyone's opinion. I'm not closed minded. I just know that we're not black. We're African American. We need to find the country we were stolen from. That country needs to back us to get what we are owed. We need to be fully protected. Bigotry and racism needs to go. Everyone needs to respect each other. And let us really make America great again. Let's really get to some real American values and let all of the citizens in America be profitable, successful, and happy, and grow and be a happy, better country. Or maybe I'm looking at this wrong. And it's not about being happy and successful. It's just about economics. I don't know. Like I said, that's my thoughts. Y'all can let me know what y'all think. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'm going to let our president, Mr. Biden, uh, take us out with 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 this last comment right here. Speech. Does calling him out divide more than it heals? Look, the way you have to heal, you have to recognize the extent of the wound. You can't pretend, you gotta face it. That's what great nations do. They face the truth, deal with it, and move on.